Hi everyone. In this video, I'm interviewing Natalie Grinblatt, an educational consultant at Accepted and former admissions director and dean from three schools, the University of Michigan, Cornell, and Arizona State. Today, we're talking about how to write quality personal statements for undergraduate admissions. Natalie, thanks for joining. Oh, thank you for having me, Jackson. So in undergraduate admissions, while filling out the Common App, the Coalition App, or other types of applications, students are often required to answer at least one main essay prompt. In undergraduate admissions, these responses are often referred to as personal statements. So my first question is, how important are personal statements in college admissions? Can they make or break an applicant's chance of admittance? That's a great question. And I would say that depends, right? So, um, so you need to meet specific criteria for a school in order for that university to feel comfortable that you're going to succeed in the program academically. And once you meet that criteria, then the big differentiators are things like the personal statement, of course, activities run into that as well, and also recommendations. But I think in terms of you know, the, the highly selective schools, those personal statements can make or break a candidate because they get so many candidates that meet or exceed that criteria that gives them the confidence that this person will in fact succeed in the program academically. So a follow up to that, what makes a good personal statement? What boxes should students kind of check off when they're writing their personal statements? Well, I hate to look at it as boxes mm -hmm. that they need to check off because I don't think of it as, as boxes. I think of this as actually, a, you know, a very organic process where the candidate really needs to do some soul searching. And I will take the common app questions as uh, the examples for this because most of, at least my clients, use the common app. Some of them use coalition app and, of course, you know, UC app or apply Texas. But I think if you want to check a box, the box that I would check is, are you answering the prompt? And I will give you an example of this. Um, so a lot of the prompts have a secondary part to them. They ask a what, and then they ask a why. And a lot of candidates don't really answer the why. That's the more important part of that essay. So you need to do a lot of soul searching in order to answer that why even if it's a prompt that seems like oh this is a piece of cake for me to answer like the problem i solved question on the common app okay so what's a problem i solved or a problem that i'd like to solve but the why is really important in this context so if we're gonna check a box it's answer the prompt and make sure you get that second part of the question. I think, you know, in terms of the organic process, I think the key thing is, and I'm sure you've heard this from a lot of people, is to be authentic. But this has got to be about you. It can't be about other people. It's about you. It's a statement that says, this is what you're going to get if you admit me to your program. This is who I am. So authentic, honest, it needs to be your voice. It needs to be sincere, okay? I think I personally like essays that uh, go layers deep and help me understand what makes that candidate tick. What are their motivation? The key thing here in terms of the soul searching is really to um, find what you want to tell the admissions committee about you. What's something that is really personal? And don't think about this as wanting to write something that they want to hear, but more about a conversation you want to tell them. So I think a great thing to do when you're thinking about the idea that you want to write about is how do I want to explain this um, story? If it's, you know, if it's something that's really important to you, and it should be. Um, the other thing 
I find is that the best essays are ones that can um, talk about one thing and cross into another part of their life. Okay, so um, I'll give you an example of a client who talked about debate. This is actually not an accepted client. It's somebody, a friend of mine whose son worked with me. And he wanted to talk about debate because he just loved, loved, loved debate. Um, and, it, and the essay was about debate. Well, to me, that was kind of ho-hum. What I knew about this candidate is that he also had a speech impediment. And um, he got over that speech impediment. And I think that that was kind of critical for him in terms of wanting to be a debater. So I asked him to think about what that speech impediment felt like and the first time he got up on the debate stage and what that did to him. And he came up with this idea of just, you know, not actually being able to speak. Like it was really difficult for him. But by the end of his four years of high school, he was a debate champion, a national champion. So we talked about that struggle, that personal struggle. Now, every candidate doesn't have a personal struggle. They might want to talk about activities that they've been involved with, but it just has to be really meaningful to them. My own kids talked about their camp experiences. That might seem cliche, but when you delve deeper and can bring the ideas into another aspect of their life, like what they were able to learn, it makes so much sense. I also think you need to be detailed enough. I call it like, like if you think about sports and color commentary, that's what I think about here. It's like taking a, a coloring book and filling it in. Be detailed enough so that you bring the reader into your world. Again, conversation, you're having a conversation with the reader and they know nothing about you. So, Give them enough detail so that they understand what's going on here. And I think just by nature, because the essay forces you to have a limit on your words, one, don't edit when you first write. Don't edit yourself because you won't get the content that you need. Write as much as you can, but then scale back, edit later, and then as a result, you'll be concise. The story will be tight and you'll be concise. It does have to be logical. I mean, there's some people that want to use gimmicks. I don't think gimmicks really work in admissions essays. And of course they need to be well-written. They need to be memorable. And uh, I think they need to evoke some emotion, not necessarily sadness. I mean, it's not always about crying, but one of the most memorable essays I read when I was an admissions director made me laugh so hard that um, people could hear, my door was closed in my office and people could hear me in the hallways because I was laughing so hard. If you're naturally funny, that's great. If you're not naturally funny, that's okay too. But evoke some kind of emotion, happiness, empathy, sadness, warmth, something. Great, so you kind of talked about going through and editing and how you shouldn't do that on the first round through, but how big of a role do mistakes, grammar mistakes and punctuation mistakes play in whether or not that applicant's essay will be taken seriously and graded highly? Yeah, so what mistakes say about the candidate is they might not care. And you really need to care about this essay. It is really important. So proof, 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 and proof again, and have your friends proof, and have your parents proof, and have siblings proof, and have a teacher proof, and just whoever you can get to proof your essay, make sure you do that, because mistakes show that, you, you know, maybe you don't care, maybe you're being uh, you're trying to get this in at the last minute and you really didn't take the time or care enough to make sure that punctuation was correct, grammar was correct, and so on. Well, thanks for joining us, Natalie. Thank you for having me, Jackson. If you enjoyed this interview, please give it a thumbs up. And for more interviews like this, please subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.